Okay, uh, hello everybody. Um, this is the video that I asked you to um, watch as part of our homework for uh, Friday's class meeting. Uh, it's nothing big. I just wanted to go over the, um, the next assignment a, a little bit more um, thoroughly with you. Uh, and just in case you needed to hear me talk a little bit about it um, rather than just reading it. So uh, so I'm just going to kind of walk you through the assignment um, and then email me with any questions that you have. We will be moving into Reading Persuasion um, next week. And uh, before we get into Reading Persuasion, I'm going to have you do a little bit of um, research um, that will kind of gear us up for asking interesting questions, coming up with interesting research topics. Uh, so that's all uh, for Tuesday's class. Um, but uh, if you feel like it, begin reading uh, Persuasion. It's a fairly short novel um, as far as Austin's novels go. So so we can hold off a little bit on that um, if, if you like. But if you want, go ahead, you know, check it out. Um, it's a great novel. <laughs> that's why I'm having you read it. So uh, uh, just keep in mind that, um, that that's, this is our last novel and we're going to be moving on primarily to the, um, the research project. Okay. So, um, let me just walk you through that a little bit. Okay. So here we are on the 17th, um, for Friday's class, our electronic class, right? I've asked you to read the assignment sheet for the next project. Okay. Um, among other things. So here's the research essay assignment. This essay assignment is um, going to be a little bit longer than the first one. So whereas the first one was five to six pages, this is about double that length. Um, and the reason is because you're going to be incorporating substantial amounts of research. Okay. So one of the things that you may have noticed in the last essay is the extent to which we took a lot of time with each part of the essay kind of um, doing a directed summary and then thinking about what needed to happen first and then really fleshing that out and then moving on from there, right? We're going to be continuing those techniques. I'm really trying to uh, explain exactly what we mean, connecting the dots. Uh, and that's another reason why it's an 8 to 12 page, sorry, a 10 to 12 page research essay. So as I mentioned, this is going to be a 10 to 12 research based essay. Okay. Uh, it's on a topic of your choice. Okay, but of course, it's going to have to be about Austin's novels, right? <laughs> but, you know, outside of that, um, your choice. Um, these are the, the loose criteria that I have for this, okay? You can work on any single novel that we've looked at this term, okay? But remember that you can narrow that subject down, okay, as you see fit. So um, you could, for instance, work on a film adaptation of Persuasion. Right. You could work on um, the reception of Austin in India, right? Um, looking primarily at, say, something like Pride and Prejudice. Right? Um, so you should work on one novel, okay? And you can narrow that in any way, um, as we talked about. One of those ways might be an adaptation of a film um, version of it, uh, but you're still really primarily talking about that novel, right? That one novel, okay? All right. Uh, if you do have a topic that you super are invested in working on, um, but it incorporates more than one novel, then just, you know, talk to me and we will work through it. Okay. I'll help you find a good angle for that. Okay. So this is a fairly traditional research essay. Okay. It's going to need to have a debatable and significant, interesting thesis that's going to speak specifically to your interpretation of the topic that you've chosen to work on as well as the intellectual conversation that you've educated yourself on over the next few weeks, okay? So it's gonna to have to have a thesis statement and that thesis has to speak to your interpretation of your topic, okay? Your interpretation of your topic, as well as, right, how your interpretation fits into a broader intellectual conversation. That's where the research comes in, okay? So you've done relevant research on the topic, you've begun to see what the nature of the conversation among scholars and thoughtful people is like on your topic. And out of that, you've begun to develop your own more informed thoughts and interpretations. Okay, so it's a traditional essay topic. This is just how I'm explaining it to you. Okay, um, you have to have a thesis and that thesis has to say something about your interpretation, your informed interpretation okay, of that topic. So if you're working on the very, very broad topic of marriage in persuasion, your thesis has to be about 
what your informed interpretation is of the way marriage is functioning in persuasion. Okay. So one of the things we're going to be doing as we go along is an annotated bibliography of five sources. Um, you're going to be asked to use at least five sources in the essay, but no more than seven. So you have a little bit of leeway here if you find something that's really ex exceptional and you want to use it, but um, uh, for a specific purpose, but uh, but it's in, in excess of your 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 central right resources. Then then we can talk about that. Okay, you can you can go over the five, um, but just no more than seven. Okay, with a paper of ten to twelve pages, it's highly unlikely that you'll be able to effectively fit in. Um, more than five sources on this essay. Okay, so um, we're going to have drafts of the essay that'll be due periodically, and then we'll do another round of peer review and workshopping. And I have some ideas for how we might do this electronically um, that will involve, of course, uh, Google Docs. Uh, but I'm also hoping that we continue our habit of doing really focused full class workshops with um, say two paper, one paper at a time, okay? In class, it would have been two people reading their, their drafts aloud and getting feedback on them per you know class period. Um, but given that we're gonna be doing it online, um, I'll have to rethink that. Uh, I'd rather it be sort of one student at a time, okay? And we'll probably do that with something like Zoom, right? Um, I'll just ask uh, you to share your screen, which has your Google Doc on it, and you'll just read it aloud for us. And then we'll comment on it um, electronically. Okay, so that's kind of my plan. Don't have all the details worked out quite yet, but uh, but it'll be some combination of Zoom or, and or uh, Google Docs. Okay, so uh, traditional essay, ten to twelve pages, at least five sources, right, uh, with a thesis, etc. And I want to say a little bit about the kinds of materials that you should use, okay? What I'm really looking for are uh, books, book chapters, or scholarly journal articles that you found through a database that we're actually going to be looking at next class, okay? You should be primarily working with book chapters or journal articles. Now, this is going to be... Um, probably skewing towards the scholarly journal articles or possibly book chapters, um, given that we are going to be doing this all online, okay? So we won't be able to have the print resources that we might otherwise be able to turn to in, in books. So you're going to be looking for scholarly journal articles uh, that I'm asking you to find via the MLA International Bibliography. Okay. Now, the reason I'm asking you to look through the MLA International Bibliography is because this is the bibliography of choice for the discipline you're studying in. Okay, so uh, this is the primary discipline and database that is used for those who are studying literature, literature and culture, right? Uh, so we'll take a look at that. It's, it shouldn't be any different than any other database. It's just that it collates different materials, okay? Materials like journals and books, etc., that are specifically geared towards this subject, this topic, this broad discipline, okay, in literary and cultural studies. So you should be working primarily with books, book chapters, or scholarly journal articles that you find through the MLA bibliography, okay? But you can supplement that research with really well-chosen articles from substantial popular educated readership magazines like The New Yorker, The Economist, and so on, okay? And what that means is uh, I'm, looking, I'm looking for robust articles, okay? I'm not looking for movie reviews, okay? Or uh, interviews, okay? I uh, want to hear what someone who has informed themselves on the matter and has studied it has to say about the subject. Okay? So if you have doubts about your source, then I'm going to ask you to look for clues to its general strength. And here's, here are the clues, right? Should it, you know, it should be of an appropriate length to really dig into a subject, right? Um, the author clearly knows whereof she speaks, as evidenced by their credentials, other works they've authored, the amount of research they've done. And then the source is reputable among those who study and think deeply about literature or culture. So these are just some questions and clues that you might want to think about if you have doubts about your source. You shouldn't really have doubts about your source if you're working with them, if you're working with sources that you find through the MLA International Bibliography. Okay, This is really more for those um, educated readership magazines. Uh, I've also listed down here the characteristics that I'm looking for in an A paper, okay? Should have a strong thesis that gives structure to the argument throughout. 
uh, an organizational form that moves from the intro to the conclusion and from body paragraph to body paragraph. Uh, should have logically ordered evidence, well-chosen evidence that's both from your scholarly sources and from your analysis of the novel. Um, you know, it should have the evidence that really connects to and supports your arguments as well. And so it's not just evidence, here's a quote, but here's how the quote, here's how the piece of evidence connects to my argument. Okay. Um, it should, you know, not misinterpret the novel or, you know, appropriate the author's ideas or words without sufficient attribution. So it needs to be accurate. Okay. Uh, and, you know, it should be written in a clear style of writing that has clearly been edited as well. It's also gone through workshopping and revisions, has a minimum of 10 pages and a maximum of 12 in MLA style throughout. And then again, finally, a works cited page. Okay. Um, so those are the characteristics of this essay. This is what we'll be working on for the rest of the term. Uh, it should be fairly straightforward, and I hope that these instructions, which I've tried to be very, very clear on, um, are making sense to you, okay? But if they're not, um, please reach out to me as soon as possible. If you have any questions at all about the nature of this project, um, then then just, just shoot me an email, okay? Um, otherwise, uh, take care, wash your hands, and I will see you on the internet.